So now it'll come down, it's gonna face the top off, and that'll be the same motion it does to clean the back side up. So you first you, you, you flatten out the top surface. Yep. Okay. Yep. Is it one pass? Yep. It's one pass on this side. The other side it takes it in what, three or four? So this one's going to just go to the outside edge first. Yep. So we're going to do it. clean the outside up and profile and make the shape. Then I'll switch. I'll drill the holes. Actually, what I'll do is we'll spot drill the whole location. And then it'll come back with the drill and drill the holes. And then I'll go through and I'll mill the, uh, the slot. What's a piece of equipment like this go for? A lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know the actual number on it, but I do know it. See you guys later. There's six numbers in there, right? No, three, four, five. Only oh, yeah, really? Okay. In this one. I know you've got some in here that are probably six-figure machines. Yeah. What it gets you is when you start getting all the tools and everything. Those, I mean, that end mill that he's using right there, that's probably about 80, 90 bucks. So, you know, the a 55-gallon drum with a coolant goes for about four grand. I think. Now, how do you decide what uh, sequence to do all this in? Just experience? Experience. Well, you know that you want to. So that just spot drill. drills them so the drill bit doesn't slip around. Exactly. You got to tell that drill. You want that drill bit not to walk around or anything. If it if it comes down and doesn't have a free drill hole, it can come in. It'll dance. Hit the surface and move over a little bit, and then goes into that yeah, angle yeah, yeah, and yeah. breaks the drill bit. Well, a lot of it's experience. You know, Bill's got you know 25 plus years of experience in the industry, so he, uh, that's great. He can put stuff together in really good order. Well, there's a logic to it. That's for sure. Yeah. And I mean, when it comes down to it, I mean, you're still limited by the material in the tool and how fast you can run it. You know, this machine can can only run one third the speed of the big machine over there. Because the big machine's got a bigger, faster spindle motor in it. This one's only capable of 4,000 RPM, and that one's only capable of 12. So you run that one considerably faster with certain materials. But then, when, you, when you're drilling it, you're talking, even with aluminum and a 4,000 RPM spindle, we can only drill at 1,800 RPM. There's a the limitation for the tool. So there's a, a fine balance there that comes with the experience. A little more precise than me hand sanding them. Well, it's a lot more precise too than uh, than not taking it from John, but taking it and just kind of grabbing it, moving it over a little bit until it fits. Oh, no so question what, about what's it. What's nice about this is we can cut 25. And they'll all be the same. Exactly the same within a thousand of an inch. As long as the built drill bit's not worn out. Exactly. And you know, we always cut a couple extra pieces. One of one of these. Uh, the guy, you know, Christian that was just there running them, he put one in and there was a little aluminum chip under it. So it sat just off a little bit. Well, each one that comes off the machine, we check it. And he pulled it off and he checked it and he went, hey, something's not right here. So we had to put that one inside and scrap. That's why we go through the process of making those drawings, have the customer approve the drawings. That way, what drawing? What drawing? We talking about? I never approved those drawings. <laughs> I got the emails.
Well, yeah, it was a good thing we had the drawings, though, because they made the one that had to be a little thinner than the rest of them. Right. And, you know, I was I just happened to be out here, and Christian pulled that first one off. He goes, oh, it's 250. I'm like... No, it's 235. I was like, I was like wait a minute. I'm like, which one is that? And he told me, I'm like, no, hold on a second. Don't machine any more of those. Let me go double check on this print, because those should be 235. So it was an easy fix. We just changed the second off. Second side over here to come back and take another 15 pal off. But you know, it's one of those things. As long as you have the print, this is what it's supposed to be made to. Yeah. And you have something for the machine operator to check it to when they pull it off the machine. But as you can see, it's quite a bit more complicated than uh, laser machine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Laser is a single pass. And you're done. Yep. Of course, the laser can't. The laser John has can't cut the metal. They can't even cut some of the hard wood. Uh, I know. Now, do you do you, do you do anything with wood? We have, but very little. Our machines are really strictly set up to do metals and everything. We do a lot of plastic. You know, we've done some acrylic and some uh, plastic called Delrin. Uh, we've made out of all that. So we have done some plastic. We try not to do the wood so much because it turns to a powder. Likes to float up into the bearings and everything. It could be a nightmare. Start talking about dust particles that float up in the air with all the coolant liquid that gets on the machines and everything. It's not a pretty sight. So how much is it? You know, I can see the grooves already, but how much? How how deep? How much deeper does each pass go? A pretty sophisticated piece of equipment here, huh? Yeah, I imagine it's probably going in 30 or 50 thousand step downs. This is like being at NASA. Of course, Hell yeah. Except NASA doesn't exist anymore. So he went to Z minus. I was wondering what that black was on the aluminum, but that's just the reflection of the... He's going in 40,000 step downs. Soft metal. Well, it's not so much because of the metal hardness, it's the, uh, the bit itself. It's so fragile. I mean, it's uh, I think it's an eighth inch end mill, but if you think about that eighth inch end mill, it's not a full solid diameter. There's cuts, grooves into right, it. Right, 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 right. So even though it's a, a carbide, it's Cutter, you can't it's still kind of fragile if you move it too right, quick. Right, too much lateral pressure on it. Exactly, yeah. it'll gum up. It won't cut. I mean, the worst case scenario is you're sitting there cutting, and you run too fast, and those aluminum chips you cut don't have enough time to come up to loosen out. So then you start rubbing on the material instead of cutting it while you're still pressing up against it, uh, and then you have a broken end mill, which usually results in a scrap part. which is something we like to avoid. I hear you. But, I mean, there's a lot of experience in setting up these programs that Bill has. You know, like I said, he takes those 40,000 step-down cuts, but he's also probably leaving 5,000 of material all the way around it so that he's going to come back and do one final pass at full depth to give a nice, good, clean edge on it. And little things like that are the things that he probably learned from experience. That's the combs, they're getting cut. Yeah, man. I'm excited. But that surface finish over there is okay? Oh, yeah, I would, you know. Okay. I, you know, I can, uh, I can show you, well, you have some of the, some of the factory made wood cones, yep. and you can see saw marks. Well, yeah. 
you know? So, not that we're going to say, well, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for us, but... Well, we're trying to make a better product, so heck yeah. good enough for them may not be good, right? No, it's not, it's not good enough. I just uh, bought what is called a, a pre-war uh, marine band, which, so it was made prior to World War II, and made in Germany, and you're talking about the German precision engineering. The, the, well, the metal working is, is, is terrific, but the wood combs, they're saw marks. It's like they, they put it through a, 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 a circular saw or a band saw, and that's it, man. They've stuck it on there. Well, they uh, might have. And I'm sure. <laughs> so, you know, in, in, the, in the process of um, uh, we can either call it customizing or rebuilding or, or whatever, you know, the, what you do most, for, aside from cleaning off all the gunk off the reed plates, you you, um, you have to sand comb flat to get to get some of the saw marks yeah. out of it, you know. And they weren't those combs weren't sealed back then. They were paired when it was unsealed. So when when you played on them, the moisture from your breath would penetrate the wood, and the ends of the tines would stick out, and they weren't rounded off. Oh, so it it, it, it it was like playing on a saw. Which is why the plastic combs became very popular, because they don't swell. Okay. Now this thing went back, went to a, a smaller drill bit, so that means it's yeah, what it's, it's the doing, finishing finishing stages here. Well, it's not only doing the finishing stages, but it's putting that get, little radius in there. Getting it on the corner. Yeah, yeah, it's getting that corner cleaned out. See, when you cut it with the bigger one, obviously it leaves that bigger radius. Take, when this one's done, I'm going to take a couple of still shots so yep. I can email the people. Little pre product readiness pipe, whatever. Absolutely. Sweet man, they look really sweet. I'm glad you're happy with them. That's the idea. It's done, huh? Yep, that side's done. We'll sand it a little bit and get some of the burrs off, and then we'll set it aside to do the next off. <laughs>